Hello everybody, JT Bear. Welcome back into the kitchen here at Clean Valley Farms. Even though I haven't officially changed the channel name, I think I've semi-officially changed the channel name. Today, we are making the fries cocoa brownie recipe, give or take the addition of fire salt instead of regular salt. Now, this seems really straightforward. Here's a, a quick look at it there. That's all you get. You get no more information. Um, but, you know, I could still screw it up anyway because, you know, I'm consistent and it's important to be consistent in life. So, we're going to give this a try. I tried it last, I guess about last week, maybe even two weeks ago now. And it worked out really, really well. So, this time I figured I'll try it on the camera so you guys can see uh, that this is actually a recipe you can trust. I know a lot of the recipes on the side of things are just kind of, um, here, buy more of our product. But this one actually tasted alright. So, let's get started. So according to this, we stir together the flour, baking powder, and salt in a small bowl. This will do. And uh, then I gotta start melting butter. So we'll see here. One and a third cup of all-purpose flour, dolphin friendly if it's all-purpose flour, you know. One teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. But we'll be using the uh, St. Thomas Bain fire salt for that. So I'll just get that all measured up and put into my bowl. And I'll check back on you. Or get back to you, or... Well, I guess you're checking in on me, really. Well, however this works. I'll see you in a second. Alright, so four-thirds of a cup of flour. One teaspoon of baking powder. And half a teaspoon of the St. Thomas Bain fire salt. This stuff worked out so well the second time around. That's good enough. Just, I wish you could smell the heat that's coming off of this stuff. That is insane. Love it. And mix all this together, that's about as good as it's going to get here because I blocked off the forks with the camera. Well, the one time he remembers it's a, the tripod and it's a problem. Oh, okay, well anyway, there you go. Those are, I'm going to call that mixed. That'll do. Now, I'm supposed to melt a cup of butter in a large saucepan. This is basically a cup here that's left in the block, so we'll just throw the whole thing in there. Oh no, extra buttery brownies. The world will end, but not because of that. So that's going to take a minute. I'm going to turn off the camera and, you know. Nah, you know what? Watch butter melt. It's so entertaining, right? No, seriously, I'm going to turn the camera off. All right, so once our butter has melted, I'm supposed to remove it from the heat and then stir in our cocoa first. And that was two cups, one cup. That was one cup of cocoa. So, I'm just going to stir that in there. Kind of fun. Alright, then I guess next we add two cups of sugar. Holy crow, that's a lot of sugar. I feel like I'm making jelly now. But, I'll mix that in. And then it's eggs and vanilla. Four eggs are going to go into this and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Mmm. All right. So, one, one messy little egg. Mwah. Ah, ah. No, I didn't watch Sesame Street, I swear. Two, two messy little eggs. Mwah. Ah, ah. Okay, that's about enough of that. Number three, get your butt in there. And number four. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Stir that in before I grab my vanilla. All right, and then we add the one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. There's tricky maneuverings, right? All right. Mix that all in. You know what? I'm going to ditch the spoon and switch to a spatula, I think. All right, now it says to blend in the dry ingredients because I guess, you know, sugar doesn't count as a dry ingredient. I don't know. But we'll just dump that in there. A little unceremonious, but whatever. And mix that all up. Oh, good. I was a little worried it wasn't going to fit in this little saucepan. We'll mix that thoroughly through. All right, so now that that's mixed in there, what do we need? Do, 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 do. Blend in dry ingredients and nuts. Well, all I have for nuts are some sliced almonds, so 
Who's gonna put them in there? Almond and fire salt brownies. Why not? Do to do to do. I'm gonna say that's half a cup because that's all I got. And we'll mix this through some more. Do to do. Riveting, isn't it? It's starting to look pretty good though. Kind of looks like um, an eat more at this point. But no molasses. Hmm. All right, so the recipe says I'm supposed to pour this into a 13 by 9 by 2 inch rectangular baking pan, but factually speaking, we don't have one. So I'm going to use this fantastic stoneware pie plate that I use for basically everything these days. And Shox is prepping some muffin cups so that we can have little individual brownies. Look at that. Ask and ye shall receive, right? Seek and ye shall find. So we're good to go here. And then it's a matter of putting these in the oven at 900, no, no, no. Bake in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes or until done. Because, you know, people take it out before it's done, I guess. Preheating. So while the oven preheats, I'm just going to get these into those containers and uh, you can, well, hum a little ditty or whatever you want, really. As much as I would love to uh, make you sit through this, my camera's battery is dying, so we'll get back to you. So I've tried to fill these up to just under the halfway mark. I will admit, I'm not um, terribly good with rationing things out. But these doubled in height last time we made them in the pie plate. So half is good, half is good. All right, so with our hard working little slave of a toaster oven basically preheated, I can only fit one of these in there. Oh, we got to get a real oven. Click like if you want me to get a real oven. Click it, click it, click it, click it. Shush Sorry. you. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there for uh, 30 to 35 minutes like it says. Timer, not power. All right. And we will check back on the little ones because I'm doing the little ones first because I want to eat a brownie. All right, we'll get back to you. Slight correction there. Since I'm doing little ones, I'm going to check it at 15 minutes instead of the half hour it says for like the big cake pan. All right, now we'll get back to you. So here we are checking in on these little ones after 15 minutes in the toaster oven. That is so, I don't know if you can see that, but that is so not ready yet. So yeah, I guess we should have gone with half an hour. I'm giving it another 15 minutes. All right, so here we are. It's been 28 minutes. It was smelling pretty good, so I figured I'd check it. And we got a clean looking toothpick. So these ones are set to cool. Alright, so I need to resist temptation for a few minutes and let those cool off and then we'll give them a taste. And then it's time to fire up the big brownie. Mwah, ah, ah. I think Shox is going to turn that into a butterfly cake. I'm not sure. We'll see. Alright, so I've let these cool for about 10 minutes and uh, I'm going to nibble one now. Find out just how good they are because, you know, it's the gratuitous shot. you got to eat it if you make it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So, two for two. These fire salt brownies work out amazingly well. And I have to say, using the silicone muffin cups was perfect, because then it's just, you know, you're not eating too much brownie in any one sitting. Not like I really believe in that concept, but, you know, it's a healthy day and age, so. If you have fries cocoa available, give the recipe on the side a try. If not, um, you know, I'll try and remember to put the, the recipe in the doobly-doo. But I do think this is going to be my go-to recipe for brownies. In case you're wondering why I put up a video of just brownies. If I can't find fries, I want to be able to find the recipe. So, give brownies with fire salt a try if you like spicier foods. I personally love spicier foods, so the rest of this brownie is toast. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day and go play in your kitchen.